have breaking news right now. Multiple sources tell ABC News Senator Dianne Feinstein has passed away. The longtime senator from California was elected in 1992 after serving as the first woman mayor of San Francisco. In the last few months, she faced calls to step down amid concerns over her declining health. Dan Ashley from our San Francisco station has a look at her life and legacy. Her career was marked by many firsts. Senator Dianne Feinstein was the first woman president of the San Francisco Board of Supervisors, the first woman mayor of San Francisco, and one of two women first elected to the U.S. Senate from California. Dianne Feinstein, uh, right from the start, was an icon for women in politics. She's a legend. A legend in California as the first woman senator. A legend in this Senate. She she was the leader on so many different issues. Feinstein was born Diane Goldman in San Francisco on June 22, 1933. Her mother was Russian Orthodox, father Jewish. She worshipped at Temple Emanuel Synagogue and graduated from a Roman Catholic girls high school. That school was San Francisco's Convent of the Sacred Heart. There, Feinstein was in the glee club, ballet, camera club, and athletics. She went on to study at Stanford University, where she graduated in 1955. Feinstein was married three times. She had her only daughter, Catherine, with her first husband, who she divorced after three years. In 1962, she married her second husband, Bertram Feinstein, who died in 1978 of colon cancer, just months before Feinstein became San Francisco mayor. In 1980, Feinstein married her third husband, investment banker Richard Blum. She remained with him until his death from cancer in 2022. Feinstein's first foray into politics came in 1960, when then-Governor Pat Brown appointed her to the California Women's Parole Board. But it was in 1969, at the age of 35, that Feinstein first held public office, winning a seat on the San Francisco Board of Supervisors. Former San Francisco Mayor Willie Brown was in the state assembly at the time. He recalled meeting Feinstein during those years. I remember that I was trying to get a house here in San Francisco when they wouldn't allow black people easily to get houses. And there was a demonstration, and this angular, tall, great-looking white woman pushing a baby stroller with a little kid in it whom nobody knew anything about came out to participate in the protest. That was Diane Feinstein. Mm -hmm. And that was that long ago. And so I am a great admirer. In the 1970s, while serving as the first female president of the Board of Supervisors, Feinstein ran twice for mayor, but lost. She had decided not to run again when tragedy struck the city. It's been seven hours now since that 38 caliber pistol went off nine times and took the lives of the two leaders. Both Mayor Moscone and Supervisor Harvey Milk have been shot and killed. The tragic assassination of San Francisco Mayor George Moscone by Supervisor Dan White in 1978 put Feinstein in the job. In 1979, Feinstein won her first full term as mayor and began reshaping the city. During the decade she served, she survived a recall attempt led mostly by detractors of her proposal to ban handguns in San Francisco, oversaw the remaking of the city's skyline, which some decried as the Manhattanization of San Francisco, oversaw a raucous 1984 Democratic National Convention, and saved the city's cable car system. The cable car is still running because of Diane. Feinstein rose to power as crisis gripped the city's gay community. A disease that would later be called AIDS killed thousands of gay men. Hoping to save lives, Feinstein ordered the city's bathhouses closed, a risky move considering the political power of the gay community at the time. Under her watch, the city's health department created the global standard for AIDS health care at San Francisco General Hospital. In 1990, Feinstein set her sights on a higher office, running for California governor. She lost to Republican Pete Wilson, but still made history again as the first woman in the state to win a major party's gubernatorial nomination. Then in 1992, a turning point. During what was dubbed the Year of the Woman, 
Feinstein was elected to the U.S. Senate alongside Bay Area Congresswoman Barbara Boxer. I feel a little bit like I just got married. It was a, a very special ceremony to be in the chambers, to be in this room with the history. In Congress, Feinstein served as the first woman to chair the Senate Rules Committee and the Senate Intelligence Committee. She authored the 1994 federal assault weapons ban, leading to a 10-year restriction on certain semi-automatic weapons. The legislation was prompted by the 101 California Street shooting when a gunman opened fire at a law firm in San Francisco's financial district, killing eight people. I worked with Republicans and Democrats alike. Ten Republicans, along with 46 Democrats, vote, voted in favor of the amendment. Diane Feinstein is the only member of Congress, either on the congressional side or on the Senate side, who's ever been able to get a control weapons ban signed into law. Diane got that. In 2014, Feinstein released a report revealing how the CIA was detaining and interrogating potential terrorists, sometimes torturing the suspects. The release of the report led to anti-torture legislation. This program was morally, legally, and administratively misguided, and that this nation should never again engage in these tactics. Feinstein's legislative legacy also includes creating federal coordination of Amber Alerts, the National Child Abduction Warning System, passing the California Desert Protection Act, which protected millions of acres of California desert, and created the Death Valley and Joshua Tree National Parks, reauthorizing the Violence Against Women Act to protect women from domestic violence and sexual assault, and authoring the 2022 Respect for Marriage Act to enshrine marriage equality into federal law. Simply put, Americans should be free to marry the person they love, regardless of sexual orientation or race. At times, Senator Feinstein faced criticism from some in her own party. Some of the worst came in 2018, after she initially declined to make public a letter from Bay Area Professor Christine Blasey Ford during the Supreme Court confirmation hearings for Justice Brett Kavanaugh. Ford had said Kavanaugh sexually assaulted her when they were in high school. Two years later, some Democrats also criticized Feinstein for appearing too cozy with Republicans during the confirmation hearings for conservative Supreme Court appointee Amy Coney Barrett. Still, throughout her career, Feinstein was seen as a trailblazer for women, someone who broke barriers, juggling being a wife and mother while navigating a career in the male-dominated field of politics. Diana is unbelievable in terms of how she sets her mind into her program on doing something in a guest zone. In Feinstein's later years in office, concerns were raised about her mental fitness and ability to serve. She was the oldest sitting member of Congress. In late February of 2023, at age 89, she was hospitalized with shingles. That health scare coming the same month, Feinstein had announced she would retire from the U.S. Senate when her term was up in 2024. She told reporters it was time. You know, there are times for all things under the sun, and uh, I think that will be the right time. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer said Feinstein teared up when she told her Democratic colleagues about her decision. And she got a standing ovation that lasted minutes and minutes and minutes, one of the longest I've ever seen, which shows the love that our caucus and our country have for this wonderful, wonderful leader and legend, uh, Dianne Feinstein. Our thanks to Dan Ashley from our San Francisco station for that report.